Hello everyone and welcome to uh, today's video. Now today it's going to be like how I do with NASCAR and F1 where I'm going to go back and talk about the results and also Valorant. With Overwatch League now finally starting, I get to talk about week one of the matches. So I'm basically every single week I'll be coming here making a video on this and I'll basically be talking about the teams that happen. So the teams that versus each other. Um, the score, my opinion on it, because I did watch some of them, mainly the APAC, not really the NA region, um, but I'll basically give mainly my opinions on all these matches. So we're first going to start off with the first match, which is Houston versus Dallas, and I'm going to try to scroll down very, very slowly, just so I won't spoil it for the next one, but it is a 3-2 to two to Houston Owls way. Now this is very, very unexpected for me, and it's really got me thinking about actually is Houston a dark horse for this season because they have some pretty good players obviously they have Happy, they have Jungu, Piggy, uh, Crimzo, uh, obviously they still have Hydration, Dante and obviously they, they also have the very experienced and very thoughtful Jake and I think it's definitely an, a little bit of an upgrade I think having Jake in the roster is actually is amazing um, obviously to help um, to help Houston really have the how to really counter all these um, all the teams and everything. So Houston, definitely a team to watch out for for this season. Um, so in Dallas, a little bit disappointing, but they're a bit inconsistent like always. The next one is Shock versus Gladiators, and obviously they, this is a three to one fashion to Shock. I'm not really that surprised. Um, I thought Gladiators was probably gonna give them a little bit more of a fight, but it doesn't. It didn't really look like in this one. And I think that we move to the APAC region, and yes, we do. So, the first of all was Shanghai versus Guangzhou, and it was Shanghai's way 3-0. I thought Guangzhou was going to have a much, much more of a fight, um, but they kind of look kind of lost, I'll be honest. Obviously, it was their first match, and actually against the Shanghai Dragons in the next, in the, in the NetEast Cup, I think it was, or the Nexus Cup. Um, well, sorry, the Shanghai Masters. They, it was very, very close, and Cali was popping off, but this time, it was actually Choi Sewon who popped off. Uh, Cali, no offense to him, but he didn't really do that much, I'll be honest, but definitely looks like Shanghai is very, like, is one of the top teams in the world for Overwatch League. And for the next match, it was really a, really see how Valiant went, and Valiant actually got a map of Chengdu Hunters, which is a pretty big of a shock because I thought Chengdu was just going to 3-0 Valiant very very easy but they did look very very competitive including Milan Ran, um, Shoshang and Crystal. Those three looked very 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 good and if uh, like maybe we yeah, can work on something Civil 3 don't be aggressive and High B can stop one trick and break. I think this team may May, uh, may surprise some people, I'll be honest, so look out for Valiant based, uh, definitely in the future. And the final match was APAC, was Philly versus Seoul, and I'm really thinking Philly is very, very, very like probably second place in APAC behind, behind Shanghai. They looked very, very, very good, they looked very, very dominant against a Seoul Dynasty game, eagerly close of winning um, Season 3. Um, but Seoul looks really good, but Philly just looks extra, extra better. So that's basically it of like, I guess like day one of it. Or oh, there's probably more, I think, actually. But we now go back to the ANA region, and it was Vancouver versus Toronto, and Toronto wins against Vancouver. I didn't watch this, I'll be honest. Um, I'm very surprised Vancouver kind of put up a fight, but I just have to um, look at that actually. Um, but. Toronto also looked pretty good, just like Houston. Maybe our dark horse team, just like Houston. I think you definitely have to watch out for the, for these two teams, of Toronto and Houston, um, because they made some mistakes. I think they surprised me, and Houston definitely, definitely surprised a lot of people. Um, so I'm I'm very, very excited to see how this Toronto lineup goes, and I think they have a really integrated beast and logic very, very, very well into this roster. I was like, you're swapping them in sometimes for a couple maps or some specific type of maps like Control or Escort. Um, so, I'm very, very excited to see how well this team goes. And I think, I don't know if the team actually speaks English. I don't actually know about the communications. So, 
I'm very excited to see how Toronto goes for the uh, coming up, like next couple matches. Atlanta versus Florida. Now, Florida did, did win three to one, and I don't. Th and I think the DPS lineup was mainly Pelican and Edison, and it was there was no Kai at all, which which really, really disappointed me. As I am an, an Atlanta fan, I it did it. Uh, I don't really know actually, but um, it does disappoint me that. I thought Florida is is now a very 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 good team, and I'm not really that surprised that they did lose like this. But um, we just have to wait and see really in the really in the future because obviously we have only seen Atlanta basically all these teams twice, and it really just depends on how well they go over the season and see if they're if they're actually like developing actually doing well against other teams and not really basically just plumbing down to the drain. Hopefully Dallas does not become like that, but this it is most likely gonna be happening like that. So obviously Florida wins against Atlanta three to one. We now go to the oh actually no we actually keep going with NA. Dallas was gladiators. Now this one surprised me. Three to one to Dallas's way. I thought it was gonna be Gladiators three to two. Because I think Dallas is a very competent team. But with Gladiators already losing their matches that worries me of how um, of how good they are. Obviously, they have gone up against the shock, and a little and uh, I feel like they'll be uh, they were a bit lackluster against the Dallas. Um, I don't really know how well they went actually, but I'm very very disappointed of how glad it is is currently showing, and I really want them to improve, but we just have to wait and see really. If they do, but I hopefully they do. Cross my fingers. We now move on to the APAC region, and it was an 3 to Seoul Dynasty. Um, Guangzhou. Obviously, I can't really blame them for doing this bad. They have they have up against they they have gone up against some pretty good teams. So, like Shanghai and Seoul are are really 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 good. So I'm not really that surprised that they've done that bad. But still, Guangzhou I think needs to have a bit more of a fight against these bigger teams. Um, because they actually quite they I I think I was so excited for them and then they looks like they've kind of shot the bed and I'm very very disappointed on that. But anyways, we'll see how they go and across the future of the matches. Now this one is possibly the biggest upset in this week. Chengdu 3-0 Shanghai. Now it's kind of like a repeat of last season. You remember when I think it was like it was Chengdu versus Shanghai around week six, week seven. Um, obviously, when the pandemic hit, Chengdu, I think, 3 to 1 Shanghai. And this, I was watching this. Holy fuck! Is Leave, Jinmu, and Monk. They are so, so good. Elsa was also amazing. Gage was amazing as well. Really just pressure Shanghai. Shanghai did nothing. I feel like, because if you actually go to the match details, which I'm not going to, if you go to, if you look at the details, it's like, Oh my god, they thrashed Shanghai, they full hold, they, they, they legit full held them, I think it was Havana, they 2-0 them in Oasis, it was very very close in Gibraltar, but Chengdu was just, they, were, they, were, they did so so well against Shanghai, and I'm, I, I, I just, th this is really now the Chengdu zone, this is actually now the Chengdu zone, we, we, we don't know what's going to happen with Chengdu, obviously they, they 3 to one value, which I'm not really that surprised with, but they 3 0'd Shanghai, and I'm. This is a team you should definitely watch because they are ama They are amazing to watch. They are like they have like these creative tactics of how to really deal with teams. And what was it? Yeah, I, it, I know, it was not Havana. I think it was actually Eichenwald. Sorry, but oh my god, was it amazing? It was possible. It was it was such, it was such a great match to watch. And I think next is another APEC. Yep. Philly versus Valiant, not really that surprise. They did kind of, they actually did put up a fight. They actually won the first half of Busan, and obviously we were all shocked. Like the casters were shocked. I think it was Achilles and Avril casting that. I, I was shocked. I was watching, and I was shocked. Everyone was shocked. So, not really. I'm, 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 I'm very surprised that they actually, you know, actually, uh, they, they, they made the series actually kind of competitive. I think Guangzhou also did with Seoul. Shanghai doing anything with Chengdu, with Chengdu, sorry about that, pardon me. But 
it was kind. It was very, very competitive. It was very interesting as well of how Crystal will go against Carpe, and they it was kind of back and forth. I'll be honest, it was back and forth between Crystal and Carpe. Um, I was Silver Three. I feel like got a little bit, a little bit greedy. He definitely went in a couple of times without his team, without any help. So, um, yeah. But my lad ran though. He was popping. He was so, so good. Um, so definitely watch out for Valiant in the coming future in their next match. I don't know who their next match is, but we'll have a look after this. We continue now to NA, and this is another, another big upset. Houston are lost 3-2 to two shock. Now, Houston, now with this, with this Houston and shock, this, this definitely tells me that they are a dark horse team and an underdog. They may be, they may sneak their way into the top five. They may sneak their, yeah, into the top five of NA. Because I, I have been really, really impressed with Houston. Yes, we've all been kind of, uh, kind of down on Houston, but I'm, I, I'm, I'm full on ready for Houston to just surprise people. Because Houston is kind of like the Chengdu Hunters in NA. We don't know what's going to, we don't know what to expect with Houston. We don't know if they're going to flop. We don't know if they're actually going to do this and upset the Shock, who won two seasons in a row. We just have to wait and see, like, because Houston looks amazing now in season four with all of their pickups, having Happy, Dante, like, it's DPS, oh, that's scary. And, like, Juby, I think, has done pretty, pretty well, like, really well as well. Like, oh, it's, it's great to see, really. Um, so, and Shock, I think they did put up a good fight. I didn't watch it, obviously, because I don't, I, I have, I don't watch, I don't watch NA that much. I mainly watch the APAC because time zones, um, but. It's really great to see that someone can actually defeat the Shock and automatically on the first week they are now defeated and the one to one now on record. And Houston is undefeated, just like Chengdu. So this this season is gonna be very competitive and very, very crazy. The next match it was Florida versus Vancouver, and that was a three to one fashion to Florida. I feel like Vancouver can take some maps off, but I don't know if they're going to have that elusive win. But next week, maybe that may happen. Um, so, Florida was winning against Vancouver. I'm not really that surprised. We just move on. And I think this was the final match. And is it? Yeah, it is. Um, so, 3 to 2, Toronto and Atlanta. This was a very, very close match. And obviously, I want Atlanta to win. And, it def and Toronto just blitzed them. It was the 3 to 2 fashion, though. So, it was. Uh, so it went. I think they went to o overtime. I think in. Six maps, I think. Cause I think they tied one. I can't remember. It was a shock. I can't remember. It was. It, it was one of the three to two matches. But Toronto did very, very well. And just like Houston, underdogs. They are dark horses of that A. So I just, I, I just really wanted to see Houston versus Toronto. Really, that was going to be a fantastic matchup. And Atlanta it looks like they're kind of been struggling. They don't, they don't really know what they want to do. The pieces aren't really, haven't really joined in properly. I'm a little bit disappointed in, in Atlanta, but. Maybe in the future they will improve. So we now move on to next week, and obviously next week is when we're going to have we're going to see some new teams like London, um, Paris, Washington. Uh, I think there's like one more NA team. I can't remember. I think there's yeah, there's one more. I just can't remember it's on my head, but it'll probably come to me later. Uprising, there it is, uprising. And for APAC, we're going to see Hangzhou in New York for the first time. So the first match will be basically the new toilet bowl. Vancouver versus Paris, that's going to be the new toilet bowl. You know, the famous toilet bowl from last season against Boston and Houston. Yeah, this is out of toilet bowl, Paris and Vancouver. Next up, then we Gladiators versus Spitfire, a new, a basically like the same rivalry. And then we now go to APEC, Chengdu versus New York. We're going to see how well New York goes against Chengdu. Philly versus Spark. We're going to see how Spark does with the 12, with the 12 man roster. That's uh, so just an encore, doesn't really matter. Houston versus Paris, so we're going to see how Paris actually really keeps up with Houston and, and if Houston actually continues the upward tra tra uh, trajectory or it goes down. Boston versus Gladiators, see how well Boston does against a very inconsistent Gladiators team. And Washington versus Dallas, uh, which is the best Kore full on Korean team. I don't really know because Washington looks very, very strong. IP. Spark versus New York, um, two teams that are, are, are basically playing for the first time this season. See how well they go up against each other. New York may, be, may surprise some people. Uh, Chengdu versus Philly. 
Yeah, these two are basically currently right now the two best teams in APAC. So we're gonna see how well they go and who's gonna be, I guess, two, I guess, three to one, if they win their their matches. That's just an on call. Houston versus London. We can see if London actually a European team can can compete with some Koreans on Houston. Boston versus Dallas. Um, See if they even they even do something, you know, just see like if it's a close match or not even close at all, because Dallas also looks very very strong. We can see how Boston goes, and I think this is the final one. No, is that actually? I don't think it is. Yeah, it is actually. Vancouver versus Washington. It's gonna be an absolute slaughter fest for um for Washington to beat out Vancouver that easily. So that'll be basically on my time, the twenty fourth to the twenty sixth. Um, probably from if you if you're like over like China or, or Asia or NA will be a lot different for you guys, but for my region it'll be 24 to, to 26. So yeah, we now move on to the standings, and after I will show the the regular standings in the regions. Now Philly and Chengdu are currently tied with a plus five map differential. Now Florida, Toronto, Houston, Dallas, Shock, Seoul, Shanghai. Um, also the lead these. All these teams have not played yet and top in their tenth place. Then in the bottom, Atlanta, Vancouver, Glad well both Los Angeles' teams and Guangzhou running out um uh, running out the the standings. We now move on to the regions and currently Florida is in the lead with Toronto, Houston, Dallas, Shock behind them. And then Atlanta, Vancouver and Gladiators behind them. Obviously with um, Ashley who played. And then in the east, Philly and Chengdu are currently tied. Then Seoul, Shanghai, Spark and New York have not played yet. And then Valiant and Guangzhou. So it definitely looks very, very competitive. And I am very, very excited to see how well all these teams, how how these teams go in the coming future. Uh, so this is for the May Melee tournament, if you're wondering. Um, so these are basically the qualifiers. We'll play four matches each. And I think the, what is it? I think it's the, the top. I think uh, for APAC it is a top four, and then for NA it's like I think it's the top. I think it's also the top four. I can't actually remember, but it is something. That's all I know. So that's it for me now. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Catch you guys all next time in the next one. Goodbye.